Welcome to the Council HR homepage. My name is Tom Nichols, and the reason I'm making this video for you today is because when I go to website, I'm looking at certain things that you are probably looking at right now and asking. And those are, one, who is this company, <laughs> and what do they do? Two, what they claim to do, can that actually help my business? Will it get me to my growth goals that I'm looking at? Thirdly, can they deliver on what they're actually saying? And for that one is probably the most important. You're looking to see, is this company credible? Do they have a strong track record of success? Do they work with companies that I know? And for me, I love seeing companies that drink their own champagne, that use a service that they speak so highly of and show how it helped them grow their business. And that's what I'm looking to aim uh, to answer in this video is these questions, introducing Castle, our service, case studies, and basically how we've helped a number of different companies grow. Now, first of all, Castle HR is an outsourced HR consulting firm that specializes in helping small businesses and startups build high impact HR strategies for forward thinking leaders that will get them to their growth goals faster. We typically get added into teams when leaders and founders are now spending too much time on HR challenges. Uh, the team has grown to such a point that this is monopolizing more and more of their calendar. And teams love adding our senior HR professionals because they take the reins on that HR strategy and take all those challenges off your plate, building out processes that are repeatable. So it's not just going to solve challenges today, but also then going to be in place to help in future growth and grease the rails. And these strategies are exactly what Castle has used ourselves. We've grown from basically zero and an idea to a team of over 20 people in just four years. And we wouldn't be able to have this kind of growth if we didn't have these strategies in place. And we also now currently boast a waiting list for senior HR professionals. And we've had that for a couple of years. So you don't have to be a major company to have a solid, impactful strategy on the HR side. We're seeing that at a very young age as well, and so can you. And we've done this for larger companies that are scaling as well, like Dealmaker is an example of the number three fastest growing company on the global mail list for 2022. They were with us from when they were about 30 people to north of 120 and did that in just 12 months. So that kind of hyper growth is achievable when you have these HR strategies in place because you're not churning and burning hires at that point. And this is what we really specialize in is helping companies get to their growth goals and really scale up effectively. So our methodology for building modern HR strategies really comes down to four key steps. I'm about to cover those in a second and go through them. But that means you're four steps away from those HR challenges or fires that blow up your week, cause you to lose sleep, and actually being focused and instead on building your dream team. Right, building that company that you know you're capable of building, four steps away from that. And our proven processes are there and designed to be evergreen. They're going to last. You're gonna be able to delegate them to your team. They're going to build your foundations. They're going to keep your key people. Your uh, employee engagement and productivity is going to go through the roof. This is what these processes do. This is why we have upwards of 20 companies on that global mail fastest growing list for 2022. And we will be on that list next year ourselves. And we're hoping you're going to join us there. So again, I'm going to go through these four steps and share how you can build out a solid HR strategy with our processes, how it's going to impact your business and get you where you want to go and know your company can get to. So let's get into it. So again, at Castle HR, we're an outsourced HR consulting firm for startups and small businesses. And in today's presentation, I'm going to share the exact four-step processes our clients use to find, hire, and retain top performers, which allows them to become rocket ship companies and have that hyper growth that they're looking for. Before I get too much into that, I want to back up and sort of explain my background and why I look at things differently as an HR company. And that's because I'm not an HR consultant by trade. As you can see here, I was raised by entrepreneurs. My mom was a Tupperware party wizard when I was growing up as a kid. She still now in her 70s runs this birthday card empire in Ontario. So if you have pets and have been into a pet value and have seen any birthday cards with dogs wearing hats, cats eating cake, 
And those are my mom's cards. So she's still running strong on that. My dad was 25 years at PwC and then started a sandpaper distribution company, which is actually where I got my career started after university. I was employee number five at the, uh, the sandpaper company. Spent a, a couple of years there, learned inside sales, eventually decided that a commoditized service wasn't for me, didn't really ring my bell. So I co-founded a consulting firm and my first kick at entrepreneurship um, is starting a company that did Tread, IRAP, OIDMTC, led the sales up to $3 million from zero, um, ended up leaving that company because that subsequently became a commoditized service. Went on to advance my sales career, selling larger ticket items, uh, six, seven figure SaaS deals into banks and insurance companies. Never again will I sell to banks. Just a horrible <laughs> buying experience. And as you can see, I grew larger teams. So I, I scaled the team from zero to 40. We smashed our eight figure quota and did both of those inside 12 months. So I myself have been on those rocket ship or hyper growth companies and seen what it takes and where there are challenges. And then at one point in my career and how I ended up starting an HR company is I was terminated um, and it was done extremely unprofessionally, uh, sent me reeling a little bit, as you can see from a super keen career, and ended up going back to my network to have some conversations to understand was this normal and circle the wagons. And the problem that I found is that founding teams never include HR. They don't know what they're doing. It's never somebody where we need to hire an HR at the beginning. It's always down the road, which means that someone has to wear that HR hat who has no experience. And that's a huge risk profile. And this is where get companies get things wrong and where my experience came from. And what they're doing with that is they're really white knuckling that inexperience until it makes sense to hire an HR person. And depending who you ask, that can be at a headcount of 50 people, 75 people, even further. I personally worked for CEOs that wanted to wait, quote, as long as possible to hire HR. And that was very disturbing for me. But combining these two things, the entrepreneurial spirit, the opportunity I saw in the market, naturally led me to found Castle HR. And when we started, we were just doing expert advice and custom employee handbooks. That's all we were doing, which is part of our foundation right now. That was the start of it. And we were talking to companies doing very well. They're asking us for more and more. And we had to decide what we were going to do. And this is where the conversation changed for us is when we came across this graph. This is from Google Hire and the, it shows an employee lifetime value. So at the beginning, new hires are a cost center because they're ramping up. Eventually they contribute at top speed. Year over year, they're going to get better. They'll eventually leave and sometimes there are some exit costs. And the challenges we see with this is that there's costly ramp up to get employees to be profit centers from where you hire them. If you're not hiring profit, you have a lower ceiling of productivity, stunted growth potential on that side as well. If you're not hiring just A players, Shorter tenure is a huge challenge. How are you keeping people as long as possible? And how are you avoiding those conversations with lawyers when companies or when employees leave? These are the challenges that are dictated on this chart. And whether companies admit to it or have seen this, it's happening. And this is where my brain lit up like a Christmas tree. Because then I was asking, what are the top companies doing? And how do we help other companies do that as well? asking these questions, we've now identified some of these data points. So how do we ramp up faster? How do we consistently hire better? How do we upgrade skills and careers so they stay longer and produce at a higher level? Overall, what is our retention strategy to keep our top performers? And how do we leave with a handshake rather than through lawyers? And you might think that this is something that just entrepreneurs or leaders want. These are all things that your team wants as well. They want to be put in a position to succeed. They want to be surrounded by other A players and top performers. They want to know where they're going internally for their career. And they want to stay at companies longer because changing is a pain. And when they do leave, again, handshake versus lawyer. And these are the things that are really going to, to help companies grow and what the top 1% are actually doing is they're able to get their employees to contribute faster, consistently hire that top talent, grow skills to retain them, have that winning culture that aligns everybody, that means that they're excited for Mondays and they leave amicably. 
And that led us to our thesis at Castle, that there is a need for an HR service that advises leaders on how to scale their team with proven strategies and not just show up like a Deloitte and be like, here's what you need to do, good luck but actually help them execute on that plan to achieve those predictable results. And that's the core of who we are at Castle HR and what we deliver. How we do that has now been distilled down into a flow chart that has a fidget spinner in it. This is kind of our path that we follow along. I'm going to go into a bunch of these points as we get here, but I like to show this because it's going to highlight that we have a plan when we show up at Castle HR. And that's a big part of our modern HR roadmap is showing up with a strategy in hand to help companies grow rather than being reactive and asking you what you need, which doesn't really help because you don't know. You're not an HR expert as we talked about earlier. We'll get into these sections, but the first section that we need to talk about uh, and first secret is foundation, right? So quickly covering that, we need to stop white knuckling. It takes up too much of your time. It's a distraction from your core focus. You're not an HR expert, so it's going to take too, more, too much time. And it's going to stunt your growth because you're going to be trial and erroring things or getting things wrong. So that needs to stop. We need to build out HR systems and processes, right? You need to have access to HR advice. Someone who actually knows what's going on when tough HR challenges pop up. And let me tell you about this because you probably already know it. But as soon as you hire people, you're going to have challenges. It is not a if, it is a when. And having an expert that's been there, done that with professional documents uh, will reduce lawsuits and time that you're spending on it. You need to formalize your winning culture. And that means being intentional about your values, communicating them often, and really setting your company up for this is the right people that we're going to hire. Putting an employee handbook in place is critical and has more of an impact than business owners think. Putting it that in place, like a great employee handbook is gonna do two things once you put it in place. One, it's going to protect your team and the company by having the legally required policies and best practices in there. And two, it's going to set expectations for your team on this is how things are done at our company. And with that in place, it really does help align. It's going to further perpetuate the values that is a point above. And ideally where something like the employee handbook resides is in your HR tech stack. We're going to automate what we can. We should be delivering this in a digital platform so that we can get the e-signatures so that it's always stored somewhere as an example. Surveys should be going out. And you're a busy leader or slash entrepreneur. Like you need to get reminders from your HR tech stack on when things are need to be done. So if we're automating all these processes and you have an expert running it for when fires come into place, this is a foundation that you're building out. And if we look at any great company or any great building, you need a solid foundation because you, if you don't have that, you're going to end up like the Leaning Tower of Pisa and just tilting off four degrees is, is catastrophic like it did. This is the impact then when we're coming back to that employee lifetime value of what foundations does. It allows you to ramp up faster because you're setting expectations with a handbook. You're hiring better because you're looking at your values and hiring the right people. You're also telling them that you have formalized processes, which gives them confidence you're running a competent company. You're going to increase retention with alignment on that values and having that winning culture. And with that expert advice and handbook, you're going to reduce your exit costs because you're going to protect the business. So already, just from things that sound pretty simple, we're already moving the needle on this employee lifetime value. Here are some examples of companies that absolutely love the foundations piece, uh, whether it's Kim from Talent Minded, who is a phenomenal HR leader themselves, but really wanted to solidify their HR foundations piece and brought on council to do that. And the advice we provided was uh, very valuable to them, as you can see here. Julia and Empower Canada growing a division in the Canadian market, scaling up very quickly needed to have the proper practices and policies in place so that they could do that. And Jared, a fast growing startup, wanted to make sure that they were looking at this through that modern lens and wanted that foundation to reflect that right away, not have old school policies or practices in place and really be forward thinking. So a couple of amazing leaders and companies um, that just raved us about the foundations. Before we get to secret number two, you must realize that the most costly mistake you can make while scaling is mishiring. Bringing on a toxic employee or non-aimed player is detrimental to the growth of your team, 
cause this plateau is it can actually blow up part of your company. And decades of research have shown that an unstructured interview process results in A players being hired 20% of the time. 20%. So one out of five hires are actually what you're trying to achieve. So what does that mean? Because we all know turnover is expensive, but to quantify this now based off some of those stats, four to five are not A players if we're only hiring at a 20% success rate. Cost of turnover is approximately 50% of salary. There are stats that are argue it's much higher, but we're using a conservative number. That means that with an 80% fail rate, 50% of salary, we're adding pretty quickly. If your average salary is $80,000, you're hiring 10 people, eight of those are fails, and that means your turnover cost is $320,000 in hidden costs in your business if you're not getting this right. It is absolutely critical to make sure that you are getting hires right. Because if you don't, you basically are back where you started, um, but you've had a growth plateau, you're adding extra stress to the team, which means other people might leave. This is a classic situation where you lose A players because those A players you got right are going to leave because they saw that you're hiring and surrounding them with B players and there's a turnover. A players have different expectations. So extra stress on the team, as well as the team seeing this is, is huge. So the number of the hidden costs can actually be much higher. The point is, how do we minimize the chances of making a mishire and maximizes the chance of only hiring A players who will perform over the long term? That's what we're looking for. And that comes with secret number two, which is a talent acquisition playbook. It all starts with taking time to know who your A players are. That is the key part. You will have different A players than I will, or you know the company across the street. What we want to focus on is the right people and the right seat. And this is straight out of EOS on that side and traction if you've read it from Gina Wickman. Looking at the right people means what are your values, what is your culture? You know, are they aligned with that? The right seat, really defining the expected outcomes for a role and understanding if they have a proven track record that will allow them to succeed on that side. Now, I'm going pretty briefly on here because there's so many different roles and aspects that can be covered here. But now we need to talk about attracting your A players. We've identified who you're looking for and taken time to do that and have the right processes. Now, how are we sourcing them? An employee referral program is something we are huge, huge fans of. Castle HR itself is 70% referred from our team. 70% of the time, we didn't have to put a job post in because we found an absolute all-star from our own team. Because the truth is, your A players, no other great A players. And if you want to see that, we actually have listed an employee referral program guide um, and showed you how to do that growth hacking. That's on the site. So we'll, we'll put a link to that below. What we've also included here is the custom job posting. It's critical that we don't have bullet point job postings with random asks and talking about ourselves. Don't do that. Give them the information they want. Salary, vacation, benefits. Talk about your values. Highlight the growth opportunities. Think about what you would want when you're looking at a job posting. If you want a great example, again, go to our career section and look at what we have for our evergreen job posting for senior HR professionals on the consultant side. Then you want to talk about the interview process. You need a scorecard. You need to be prepared. Ask specific questions about the right people and the right seat. Make sure you're asking questions that answer all those things. Are they going to fit into your values? Are they going to be able to deliver on the expected outcomes for that role. The great part is diversity, equity, inclusion is baked into this. That is part of having a scorecard. Um, and it also makes internal conversations easier. You're not just saying, hey, I met you know this candidate last week, they were great. Saying they're great doesn't mean anything to me. What, what do you specifically mean? Or what do you want me to ask that you didn't get to? Don't have questions where you're asking candidates the same thing three or four times and you can customize it. How many steps are make sense for this role? The answer is as few as possible to make a, a solid decision. And should there be projects included? These are things that we help build out. And if this resonates with you because finding talent is one of the biggest keys to being able to grow a company and finding the right talent, I would suggest you book a call with us and we can discuss what your current talent acquisition strategy is if you're not finding the right people applying to your job, you're losing people in your, your talent acquisition funnel, 
we need to talk as we can solve those challenges for you. And we'll discuss how we could give you uh, an experienced HR consultant to build a repeatable strategy with our proven processes, which also allows you to delegate hiring strategies down the org chart. So everything isn't falling on your plate to get done and be successful. And note, we don't charge recruiting fees. This is not a recruiting model. This is a, we're going to build you a playbook that is going to last for years and years after we're gone. So this is going to be repeatable for you. So this is an investment in the future of your company. And how does talent acquisition impact employee lifetime value? Massively um, on that, right? You're going to hire better, so you're going to have better talent coming in the door, higher productivity on average. You're going to be able to upgrade them because A players are typically looking to scale up and grow in companies. So you're going to keep them longer if you have that strategy in place. You're going to uh, be able to get more productivity as they grow in your org chart and contribute at higher and higher levels. How do we increase that retention? We're going to do that by hiring the right people, right? If you're hiring people who are aligned with your culture and your values, they're going to stay longer. That's, that's how that goes. So you can already see we're moving the needle on a bunch of these data points consistently. Uh, obviously, the, the first two secrets are hitting some of the same data points. This is going to be a trend. And people that are absolutely loving this, Rob from Camp Rain, love them on our uh, talent acquisition playbook we built out for them to reinvent their hiring strategy and be able to delegate it down so Rob is not involved on a day-to-day -day basis with hiring anymore. And Daryl at Candybox Marketing uh, has an amazing team that has blown up when we were working with them. Uh, they've doubled in size and using the employee referral program allowed him to tap into other resources and, and a network that wasn't open to him traditionally um, and made some amazing hires through that. So huge impact to Candybox and Camp Brain. So happy for both of them. Now, we are only hiring A players. We're at that point. You have a talent acquisition strategy in place. It's working well. You're getting A players in the door. It's very efficient. The question now comes, how do we you know, put them in a cannon and fire them off so that they are profit centers as soon as possible? That is the next question. And that's secret number three, is putting your A players in a position to succeed and eliminate buyer's remorse. And that second part is critical, especially with A players. So onboarding playbook. What makes a brilliant onboarding playbook? It means it starts before day one. So you're getting things organized on day zero, you know, setting up systems, emails, having the orientation mapped out and having a plan for when they show up. Because during orientation, you're not doing, here's a laptop and a high five and figure it out because that is horrible. And I hope you haven't been through that experience. I know I have, where it was a little bit of a gong show where it's like, oh, I forgot, Tom, you're starting today. Hold on. Can you? Can somebody watch Tom for a couple hours? I have this meeting in conflict and we'll get your system access set up. I swear I've emailed IT this morning. That doesn't give me confidence that you're running a professional company, right? And that's going to give me pause as an A player. And when we're talking about onboarding, orientation that first week is not onboarding. That's part of it. 90 days is when you're looking at onboarding because I'm going to bet that you have a probation review built into your contracts where after 90 days, you need to review and understand how they're doing. And they're going to be judging you in those 90 days as well to be like, is this the right company for them? Because what you need to avoid, 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 is buyer's remorse. And A players, as I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, they look at things differently. A players, the benefit of hiring them is higher productivity, all those things we were talking about in talent acquisition but they have different expectations because they probably had multiple offers. And if you don't wow them, they don't feel like you're living up to your end of the bargain, they're going on to offer number two and they will move quickly, right? So you need to make sure that if you're going to have a strategy of hiring eight players, that you're able to meet their expectations. It's critical. It's something that I see a lot of companies unfortunately get wrong. Onboarding playbook impact. Obviously, the, the main goal is you're going to ramp them up faster, turn them into those profit centers, get them going as, as soon as possible. But it also allows you to hire better uh, because if you have confidence in your onboarding program, you're going to talk about that during your interview process as a differentiating factor, being like, hey, we're going to put you in a position to succeed. And what a lot of companies don't realize is that first 90 days actually has a critical impact on how long people stay at your company. 
right? They're not wowed by that, that initial onboarding experience. They're going to leave. But if they are, you can start keeping them for longer and longer. Let's look at a couple companies. Property Vista, Lenny um, absolutely loves us. Uh, we were able to help them ramp up their, their A players and save them a staggering amount in turnover costs by putting people in the right position to succeed and get them going. Balaji at MedStack, love the structure and the processes that we built in. It's all automated. Again, going back to that HRS tech stack, uh, this is going to sit in there. Um, a lot of the onboarding is going to be in your, your HRS or your HR tech stack that you have and automate a lot of this so that it is solid workflows and processes that are repeatable. And that is critical what Balaji loves. Now, we have A players that we're bringing on board. We have ramped them up. How do you keep them long term, right? There's constantly challenge after challenge after challenge as we see with A players and building a company. And don't worry, we've got you. Secret number four, probably the number one thing that companies ask about is everyone's able to hire, though they're not hiring as efficiently as they could, but it's talent retention, right? And that's the, the key thing. If your team does not know where they are going internally, they will look externally. Right? Simple as that. That's how we lose talent is by not helping them get to their next level. Secret number four is modern performance reviews. And we're going to have some conversations that are again overlapping with what we've been talking about before. Know who your A players are, right? Talking with them every quarter about are you the right people? Having conversations about values, the culture. Are they still the right people? Because people change. And if they turn into a toxic employee, you need to identify that right away and get them out. Make sure that they're the right seat. Are they a top performer? Are they hitting those expected outcomes that we set back in our in our job description? That's critical, right? And then once you know you have the right people in the right seat, you're going to invest in them. And that means develop them, skill them up, understand where they want to go. The book Good to Great talks about this exclusively where the best talent uh, to lead companies and be leaders within a company come from within. Those are the best people to promote. They're going to get that, that good to great results. That's what makes a difference. So you want to be very conscious and intentional about this. So having those conversations is key, but again, only having those conversations with the right people that are in the right seat. And modern performance reviews are, are critical uh, to businesses. Uh, they're not uh, ones that employees are shied away from. Our team actually looks forward to and pokes us as leaders for having their performance views because they look forward to them. Not many companies can say that, um, but we hear that from across our portfolio as well. On the, uh, the impact of NPRs, you're going to be able to hire better if you're telling people we're going to promote you, we're going to upgrade your skills, if that makes sense. We have a mechanism and a path for you to grow your career here. Obviously then that means that people are going to improve year over year. They're going to stay longer. They're going to have higher output and productivity for you. And ultimately, you're going to increase retention because if you're constantly looking at your team to understand if they're the right people in the right seat, they are A players. If you're constantly checking and only keeping A players in-house, you're going to keep all of your team longer. And that's really what companies are looking for these days um, and what we hear so often. It's a challenge when companies grow and sort of get across that 20 headcount number. It really comes down to retention and then also putting new leaders in the position to succeed. Huge, huge difference for companies. And what we've seen with uh, Valencia, Aaron loved it. Really having that solid identity was key for Valencia. And that came from the values and personality of the company. We've heard that from multiple companies who have some quirky values, but it works. If that's who you are, embrace it. One of our values is come as you are. So we encourage that with companies too. And Suhan at Sync love performance reviews. There's a schedule. It's down to their managers. We've coached them how to perform those performance reviews. And it means that it's off to hands plate. So their team is set up for success. And this comes back to the modern HR roadmap that we were looking at at the beginning. And this is how we work with companies where we're coming in, uh, adding that expert advice from day one. As soon as you join the Castle family, we're, we're there to advise for any challenges you have. We'll build out the plan that makes sense for you with our kickoff call and action plan. And likely are starting with that first secret, the foundations, because as you can kind of see that build on everything else. And then we're looking at your company to be like, how can we best help you with these three other secrets? 
The order really depends on your goals and where you are as a company. We're going to pull the right tool out at the right time and possibly bring out like MVP versions of it to sort of solve like a simple one hire, for instance, rather than building a full talent acquisition playbook. But the key is here, we have a strategy, we're bringing these secrets. This is what that top 1% of companies are doing. This is how they're able to do that by onboarding faster, hiring better, leveling up and promote them, getting that amazing high retention rate and exiting amicably. I'd also add on here, which is not, is a boomerang effect that we're seeing recently. Whereas even if people do exit, they actually come back because they realize how solidly our portfolio was working and the process that they had in place. And they're like, oh, I made a mistake. I'm going to come back. So it's critical. I don't really know how to put that on this chart, but it's something for employee lifetime value that is a, a consideration as well. So now you know the exact process our clients use to build their companies. Uh, to recap, we talked about the HR foundations, um, getting those key things in place, talent acquisition playbook, onboarding playbook, and modern performance reviews. If we have these four things working in lockstep, it's really hard not to be successful. And at this stage, you might be wondering, how do I make sure my business is protected? How do I create that winning culture? How do I actually attract the best talent? How do I train them faster? How do I keep top performers longer specifically around some of those strategies. And I wish I could answer all those questions, but I'm sure you can appreciate every single business is different and has their own unique wants and needs. So there's no way I can answer all of these questions for you on this video. But what I can suggest and what we're happy to do is have a call where we'll talk about your company in specific. We'll discuss your current HR landscape. We'll understand the challenges that you're currently facing and we'll learn about where you want your company to go to what are your growth goals and then for free we will share exactly what we would do if we were in your shoes and how we would get to your goals if we were you that is what we can do and then if after that call we agree that castle hr could actually help you get there faster then we're more than happy to explain our offer and what it would potentially look like. Giving you a senior HR consultant with at least 10 years experience in working on that fractional HR model, create a custom action plan that gets you to your growth goals and then be able to adjust it as things change because the world can change in a quarter as we know, especially in a startup and small business. And then honestly, we just get cracking. Like we start building HR uh, processes that are going to have a high impact right away. We don't dilly dally here at Castle. And just to be clear, who this is not for is early stage companies. When we're talking about small businesses, I want to say companies that are under 10 employees are not ideal for us, just not at that stage where it makes sense. And if you don't have product market fit, usually both of those scenarios, you're honestly chasing revenue more than hiring and scaling at this point. You're validating whether your company is going to be a real thing. HR can't add value to that yet. It's once you get over that hump. So the other part is if you're not down with modern HR strategy and maybe have an old school mentality, this is not for you because we're going to challenge you on modern strategies. Who this is for is entrepreneurs who have revenue. So you've got over that hump and you have a couple of clients, you've found product market fit and you're looking to rinse and repeat. So you're looking to scale your team at this point and you want proven HR strategies rather than trying to figure this out yourself and learn. And you value repeatable systems and processes and understand that that's going to pay dividends down the road. So we understand we're not here for forever. Castle HR is here to build those processes. And then once we have them all set up within your company, we're going to pass a baton. So we're going to pay you know dividends again long after we've left and we've shaken hands. That's who this is for, for entrepreneurs that are thinking forward, right? And want those uh, custom internal strategies built for them. And know that we're not HR administrators. We're not there to add every new hire into an HR system. We're not going to be processing your benefits. We're not doing those kind of things. Our senior HR people are far beyond that. And it doesn't make economic sense for us to do that or for you to do that. And note again, we're not recruiters. We're not coming in there to spend all of our time recruiting for you. We're going to teach you how to fish. We're going to help you fish. 
but ultimately we're building those processes. So if that strikes a chord with you, then click the button below and let's schedule a call to have a conversation. Worst case scenario, you're not a fit. Maybe you're not at that the point where it makes sense. Maybe this isn't in the budget, but you will leave with more knowledge on how to grow your company than you started that call with. We will share lots of things as you can kind of see from this conversation. Happy to give some tips away. And the best case scenario, uh, you are a fit and we want to work with, uh, with us to protect your business, hire lead talent, ramp up faster and retain that top talent and top performance that you have. All will lead to smashing your growth goals because if you're getting all those things right, it's really hard not to hit your goals. And there's no risk unless you try to take things that I was saying in this video and waste one to two years trialing and erroring and try to build it yourself. That's going to be the risk that you have especially when you have Castle HR here who has worked with 100 plus companies, uh, industry leading teams, and is willing to jump on a call with you and show you how to get there faster. Quick snapshot of the Castle HR family and companies we've worked with. The line share of our portfolio, probably about 60 to 65% is in the software industry. So fast growing, highly competitive talent pool. Uh, you can see a bunch of names up here. A lot of those, these names, as I mentioned before, like DealMaker, Campbrain, Pluto, um, they are on that fast growing list of Global Mail, Candybox is here as well, MedStack too. The other 40%, is where we talk about the small businesses. And this is a lot of professional services and nonprofits are a big part of that. But really, it doesn't matter what your company or industry uh, is in. We can help you. We have a tequila company. We have a ramen shop who actually was on Dragon's Den and is expanding all over the, the country, right? We can help any company that is hiring people. And this is really where it is. So we're agnostic to industry. We've worked across the board. If you are in a unique industry that you believe has challenges, we would love to chat with you. We probably have somebody that has experience working in that arena. And that's that's all I have at this point to, to introduce. If you want similar results to the companies that we've seen, getting on that global mail list, being those hyper growth companies, click the button below. Let's schedule a call and have a chat. Um, and that's all I've got for today. So have an absolutely wonderful day. Thanks for listening.